I found a joystick model on trace parts that I want to use with some slight modifications, so I've downloaded a step file. Let's take a look at using the warp tool for making some modifications. All right, here I am in Creo Parametric. Let's open up the file. I'll click open and in the folder, let's change the drop down list to all files. There is the step file. I will click import and I want to make sure that I'm using my templates. It's going to import it as an assembly. Let's click OK. And here I have the assembly model. I'm going to go down to the main part that I'm interested in. So I've got it open on my computer screen. Before I start playing around with the warp tool, I want to make sure that I have a good reference coordinate system that I'm going to use as the basis for the modifications. And I notice when this imports, the coordinate system is up at the top, and I actually want one down at the bottom sort of to be my anchor. So I'm going to create some geometry. Let's create a point at the center of that curve and I'll click OK and that's going to be the origin for my coordinate system. Let's go to the orientation tab. I will click on the collector to select a surface to use for my Z direction. Let's flip the direction. I want it going upwards and for the other reference I'll just grab one of my datum planes and I can let that be the reference for the Y direction. Let's click OK and I'm going to turn off my point display and my plane display. To start the warp tool, you go to the editing drop down menu and then choose warp. And this is really convenient, I find, for making modifications to surfaces and imported geometry. And the references tab is in red because it does know what geometry that I want to use. So I'm just going to swipe a box to select everything and it's highlighted in red. Here's this button for hide original. I'm going to uncheck that just so that you can see the original in gray as I'm making changes to it. And here we have our direction reference, the coordinate system I created. And if you want, you could use a faceted preview instead of the standard geometry preview, but I prefer it not to be faceted. Here we have the list tab and this will list all the different modifications that you're doing in the warp tool. And we have a number of different choices. There's transform, the warp, spine, stretch, bend, twist, and the sculpt tool. And I'm just going to show a few of these different ones. I recommend that you play around with this. Let's start with the stretch tool. And first off, you get this marquee box, and it shows the direction that you would end up stretching this. And if you wanted to stretch in a different direction, you would use this button on the dashboard, and this would allow me to stretch it laterally in this direction, hit it again, and it would be lateral in the other direction. But I do want to stretch it in this direction. And you get this box around the geometry that's called the marquee box, and you can use this to select what area that you want to affect. So for example, maybe I just want to stretch this cylindrical portion in the middle. I'm dragging the other end of the marquee box down. And if you go to the marquee tab, you can control the size of it. So maybe I want to start stretching at 37.5 and end at 47.5 just within that particular area of the part. And you'll notice next to the start and end fields, there are these boxes. If you check any of these different boxes, you will get a dimension for those values inside of the warp feature. And that way, if you wanted to, you could use these different dimensions in a family table for creating a whole bunch of different variations. Now let's grab the drag handle and I'm gonna drag it up and you can start seeing the difference in the new geometry versus the original geometry. And maybe I want this 50% bigger, so I could choose 1.5 as my scaling factor. And when I'm happy, I can leave it at the value. I'm going to check the box so I do get the dimension for the scale. All right, let's go back to the references tab and we're going to hide the original just so I can see my final geometry. And that's good for the first operation. For the second operation I'm going to do in here, let's add some twists. I want this bent over a bit. So let's click on the bend command. 
And right now it's going to bend around the bottom. I actually want to bend the upper portion. So use the let's use the flip button. And so that way I get the bend up here. And like before, I'm going to grab the marquee because I don't want to bend the entire thing. Maybe I only want to bend starting right about up over here. And again, you could eyeball it if you wanted to enter an explicit value. You could do that as well. And when I grab the drag handle, you'll notice that the bottom is rotating away from my coordinate system as well. If you go to the options tab, you can change the pivot value. And if I change this to a value of zero, you'll notice that it's going to pivot even more. If I change this to a value of one, it's going to leave the bottom right at the original origin. And this is indeed what I actually want for the model. All right, let's take a look at one other tool inside of here, and that is the Sculpt tool. And with the Sculpt tool, it'll put a mesh over the model, allow you to grab individual points or groups of points or lines of points in order to deform this. And one thing I see is that right now it's going to deform based on the projection onto the bent geometry. I don't want that, so let's use the Delete to get rid of the Sculpt. And I'm going to grab Insert here and insert above the stretch. And now we can start the Sculpt tool. And you can see that we get a grid located on here. I'm gonna crank up the number of rows and columns for higher fidelity. And I like using an odd number because that way it'll ensure that I get the different uh, locations at the center of the group. If I use an even number, then I won't have a point at the center. And I can grab, like I mentioned, an individual point or multiple points. And so there you see the effect of grabbing that point. Um, by grabbing the center, it's making the geometry uh, a little pointier on the top of the model. And just like before, I can grab the drag if I don't want to affect the rest of the part. And just position it about the area where I want the change to take place. And that is good. And when I'm done, I can grab the insert here and drag it down to the bottom. And I get my bend created in here as well. So that is good. Let us hit the check mark. And in that way, I've used the warp tool to modify some imported geometry. And I find this also very useful for manipulating complex surfaces, especially technical surfaces created in standard mode of Creole Parametric. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.